Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for Karate. So I hope you all are ready and excited to learn the new in initiatives and the current affairs that are there that I'm going to tell. But before moving on to the questions, let me tell you guys that this is our application which you can download from the Google Play Store. I hope that majority of you must have downloaded it by now. And those who haven't downloaded it, let me inform you, you have these many features on the application. Apart from these, you have much more to explore. So download the application and try to explore it because we provide a lot of stuff like providing the information about the live sessions, providing the information about the new uploads that we make on the YouTube, the new uh, current affairs that are uploaded, spotlight is there, everything is there. Okay, apart from uh, the application, we are these three, we have these three channels uh, so that the students can connect with us. So this is the mobile number uh, which you can use to call us. This is our website. You can scroll down the website to explore more about us. This is our mail ID. So if you want to mail us your queries or you need any kind of guidance, you need not to feel alone because we are here to help you only. Apart from this, one more channel is uh, here that is discussions.anujindal.in. Now guys, this reminds me that the PDF of this session has already been provided on the Telegram channel. So go to the Telegram channel by using the link given in the description below. Download the PDF, keep the PDF beside you and then try to understand what I'm teaching you in this video. Guys, this is a really effective method. If you have the content in front of you in the form of the PDF and you're listening to what I'm saying, it will definitely help you in understanding the news better as well as retaining it for a longer period of time. So download it and come back in the session because the session is going on. Okay, so let's begin with the first question. So the first question is, uh, which AIMS has developed the first ever anti-gravity body suit to allow astronauts to perform yoga in space. So guys, there are two unique things about this news that will help you in memorizing the news better. Now, before moving on to those unique things, let me first tell you the answer of this question. So the answer is AIMS Dell. Now the unique thing is in this itself, AIMS, All India Institute of Medical Science. Now this institute and all the aims for that matter are known for their expertise in the medical science field. But now what we are seeing that they are endeavoring into the space sector or basically they have created a space, uh, a special suit for the astronaut so that they can perform yoga in the space, okay, in the International Space Center. So that makes it all the more, uh, I would say, attractive news and a unique news in itself reality about this is that AIMS Delhi is India's largest and the oldest AIMS and it has developed this first ever anti-gravity body suit which is for the first time in India. Okay, so do remember this. Now that is all to this news. I hope that you all know that the astronauts and human body for that matter performs differently in the space environment and in space the bones the muscles have to put a lot of pressure uh, so that they can uh, they can be conducive or they can stay in the space environment and this is why the astronaut life and their muscle life basically the life of their muscles is reducing at a rapid pace even though they are practicing exercise they are doing yoga for more than two hours still they are very they are feeling very hard to move their muscles to move their body parts when they come back to earth and in order to test the way human cells react to the space environment an experiment was launched by nasa last year can any one of you name that experiment in the comment section below this is guys your first question i hope this news is clear to you all there is nothing much to this news the basic purpose is to help them to do yoga so that their muscle loss can be prevented now the next question is very important okay so in how many phases will the nipun which stands for national initiative for promoting upskilling of nirman workers be implemented first of all guys this nirman 
stands for or basically needs the construction workers. So this Nippon initiative has been launched for upskilling the construction workers. Now it will be launched in three phases. So here option A is the right answer. Now here two to three things or I should say facts are important for you to understand or rather memorize from this. First fact is that this Nippon initiative that is national initiative for promoting upskilling of Nirman workers has been launched by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and it has been launched under a very important scheme which is Deen Dayal and Todiyai Yojana National Urban Livelihoods Mission that basically aims to give the livelihood opportunities to the urban poor people. So under this initiative, this Nippon initiative has been launched. But the implementing agency of this Nippon initiative is not from the Ministry of Housing but is from the Ministry of Skill. So that is National Skill Development Corporation. So guys, this is an important fact. Do remember that the implementing agency is uh, National Skill Development Corporation under the Ministry of Skill Development. Okay. Now let's move ahead to understand the scheme better. First of all, I have already told you that it is for the upskilling of the construction worker. Now what is the need of upskilling? We all know that this is the age where cutthroat competition is there. So in order to become market relevant or stay market relevant, it is very important to upskill the labor. Okay. So the Nippon aims to train one lakh construction workers and these workers are the manual laborers okay who perform the actual construction work at the site so one lakh people will be trained under this nippon initiative and one more nippon initiative is already uh, being run by the ministry of education but that is separately that is a completely separate mission so don't mix these two missions do remember one is by ministry of education for increasing the foundational literacy and numeracy among the children and this Nippon is specifically for the construction. I hope that this much is clear. Now, uh, we have already uh, understood this point that it is for the skilling and upskilling of the construction workers. Let's move ahead to the phases of its implementation. So here we have three phases. In the first phase, 80,000 construction workers, the total target is 1 lakh. Out of them, 80,000 construction workers will be given the on-site training by recognizing the already learned skills by them, okay? For example, the construction workers already know certain kinds of skill. So now under this Nippon program, their skill would be enhanced. They would be taught new kind of techniques through which they can perform better. So that would be done under the on-site skill training, which will be given to 80,000 workers. And recognition of prior learning is basically the method under which the prior or the already uh, learned skill set of the worker is recognized and, and afterwards it is enhanced, okay? Then in the second phase, 14,000 workers will get fresh skill training, okay? So here the already uh, prepared skill set was considered, here fresh new skills will be imparted. And in the third phase, 12,000 people will be given the job opportunities outside India. So this is another most important point that these many people are going to get the work outside India and outside means the Gulf countries, okay? So do remember the focus is here on the Gulf countries. So I hope that these many phases are clear. If you have any kind of doubt, you can ask me in the comment section anytime. Okay, so here. We have read about the Nip uh, Nippon initiative, but there is one more initiative which was launched by the Prime Minister last year, okay, uh, in January 2021. And this initiative is now Riti. On this initiative only, a question was also there in your uh, examination previous year. So, Navriti is the certificate course on innovative construction technologies. This program was launched by Prime Minister, and the full form of this Navriti is new affordable validated research innovation technologies for Indian housing. Now what's the purpose of this Navriti? Navriti is basically a certificate course that aims to provide the information or the skills regarding the new technologies, specifically in the housing sector, okay? So that's the basic purpose of Navriti. And 
Also remember that 2021 was the construction technology year. Then Prime Minister launched this Navdeepi and it's in the beginning of the year only. Okay. Uh, the implementing agencies, before coming to that, let me once again read you the objective of Navdeepi. So it is to familiarize the professionals with the latest materials and technologies being used worldwide for housing. Now understand this point that Navriti focuses on the professionals on the technology side. Okay, So the professionals who are already uh, working as experts in the construction field, they are going to be targeted through the Navriti. Whereas in Nippon, the basic level of construction workers, the manual workers are targeted. Now, the implementing agency. So, School of Planning and Architecture in New Delhi and Building Materials and Technology Promotion Council. These two are the implementing agencies of Navriti. I hope that these two initiatives are clear. I am again saying that the Nippon of Ministry of Education is separate. Can any one of you tell me the full form of Nippon of the Education Ministry in the comment section? Uh, okay, so this is the picture of Navriti. These are the implementing agencies. Uh, that is all about it. Now comes the third question of the day. Which IIT will establish a 5G test bed at the Military College of Telecommunication Engineering in Indore to facilitate the use of 5G technology for the army along the borders? So here IIT Madras is the right answer. Now, what is a 5G test bed? So test bed or basically a sandbox or beta launch, all these are synonymous terms. Basically, they mean that testing a technology in a controlled environment. That is the meaning of all these three terms. However, the technicalities of these three terms would definitely differ. But in order to develop an overview or an overall understanding, we can understand that these three technologies or these three methods aim to test the technologies in a controlled environment. Now, the 5G technologies that can be used by the Indian Army at the border, not only the 5G technologies, but the emerging technologies like artificial intelligence and many more. So, in order to test these technologies, the 5G test bed, test bed will be launched at the Ministry, sorry, Military College of Telecommunications, okay, which is in Indore. Do remember the location of this institution. So at this institution, this 5G test bed is going to give the environment to the IIT Madras and the Indian Army basically to test the technologies, whether they are feasible at the Indian borders or not. So that is the whole crux of this news. The director of IIT Madras is V. Kamukti. Do remember. Moving ahead, Siang is the tributary of which river? So here guys, Brahmaputra is the right answer. Now related to this river, the news is that the uh, government of India is planning to construct a 10 gigawatt of multi-purpose project on this Siang river. Okay, And this project will basically counter the project that China is already developing on the same river. Okay, So China basically aims to control the water flow. And in order to counter that, this storage project is being developed by the government of India that is going to store the water from the Siam River. Now, this Siam River is the tributary of Brahmaputra. Now, let's have a look at the course of this river. Okay, so this is an image that I got from the Google. So, it shows you the path of Siam River. So, it comes from here, China, and then it enters Arunachal Pradesh, and then it meets in Brahmaputra. So here, China is developing the project to control the water flow. And here, in the Upper Siam region, India is developing the project so that we can create a reservoir kind of uh, thing to uh, store the water for a longer period of time so that we can also use the water. Okay. Now let's know one or two more facts about this news. First is that NHPC is going to develop this project. And the cost that can be incurred or the approximate cost would be 1.13 trillion okay uh, everything else i have already taught you but if you feel anything uh, if you feel that anything is left you can ask me uh, in the comment section one more thing that 
the exact place where this project is going to be developed is Jinkyong in Arunachal Pradesh. Okay, so do remember the place as well. And again, do remember that it is in the planning stage. Okay, right now the feasibility study report is being done by NHPC of this project. So nothing concrete is there, but the plan of it is already out. Which of the following frigates has been deployed under the Operation Sankalp? So here, INS Talwar is the right answer. Now guys, recently the news is that three years have been completed of this Operation Sankalp. So it's the third anniversary because it was launched in 2019. The basic purpose of this Operation Sankalp is to protect the Strait of Hormuz uh, or basically to protect the ships that are transiting through that strait. Now let's have a look at the strait first. So guys, this is the strait of Hormuz. Oh sorry. This is the strait of Hormuz. And which strait is this? This is your question that you are going to tell me in the comment section below. So the ships that are going through here and coming back from here these ships are prone to piracy attack, pirate attack, sorry. So in order to protect these ships, India had launched the Operation Sankalp in 2019 and since then INS Talwar has been deployed at this area. Now this is guys, the Gulf of Persia, I hope you all know. This is Red Sea, this is Gulf of Eden and this trait is your question. So everything is done, now let's move on to the next question. What is the name of the exercise which SCO members will conduct in 2022? So here, friendship border is the right answer. So guys, this was announced at the 8th meeting of the heads of the border services of the member states of SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And it was organized in New Delhi under the chairmanship of India. Thus, the location of this meeting becomes important. Now, the name of the uh, exercise is Friendship Border 2022. One more exercise is going to be conducted by the SCO member states or basically the border, uh, mem the border services of the member states. And the name of that exercise is Solidarity. It is going to be held in 2023. So do remember this. Now guys, this is the list of the members of SCO. These are the permanent members. Uh, these are the observers. So Afghanistan is, a, is an observer and Iran got the entry into SCO and it's the latest member to join SCO. These three nations are the latest countries to join SCO as the dialogue partner. Okay, so do remember. Next question is who is the CEO of op Open Network for Digital Commerce? So here P. Koshi is the right answer. Why is this in the news particularly? So, first of all, I hope that you all know what is Open Network for Digital Commerce. But those who don't know, let me inform you that the government of India is building a platform. And that digital platform will basically help the retailers, the small merchants to get onboarded on that platform and sell their products to the consumers. Okay, now let's understand it with an example. You go to Flipkart's website and then you search for a product. Does Flipkart own that product? Does Flipkart manufacture that product? No. Flipkart is basically a platform that is helping the buyer and the seller connect with each other. Similar kind of platform would be this open network for digital commerce that will help all the retailers, small merchants in India to get onboarded to reach a wider audience or the consumers, okay? So recently what has happened that ONDC and NABAR have signed an MOU to allow the agricultural products to be sold and bought on this platform. However, remember that this platform has not been developed yet. It is in the development stages, okay, in order to give a window to the agricultural sector at on this platform, this MOU has been signed, okay, and uh, both entities that is NABAD and ONDC which has become an entity in itself because it has a CEO and it is basically 
operating right now the platform is being developed so both of these entities are going to create or host the navad ondc grant challenge to establish the market linkages between the buyers and the farmers produce organizing okay so that is the entire news now about the ondc you should be aware of the fact that major banks like sbi pnb and major investment companies like bsc investments have already invested a lot in the ondc platform so that's an additional information moving ahead which country's project has won unesco's king hamad bin isa al khalifa prize for the use of ict in education along with pm e vidya so it is again a very big achievement for the government's initiative because pm e vidya has received this award uh, for the year 2021 from unesco so now let's first know the answer of this question so the answer is tanzania tanzania and india both these countries have got the unesco's award for using the information and communication technologies in the education field and we all know that the audio visual aids help a lot in memorizing the content in developing the understanding of the concepts so if the uh, if the governments are using the technology to impart education what can be better than this right so in order to recognize the efforts unesco has given this award to these two nations okay so pme vidya initiative is operated by the central institute of educational technology which is again a part of ncert national council of educational research and training so this is the council that creates the book the curriculum as well and this is a part of ncert so it manages and controls the pm e vidya initiative that aims to impart the education through dth direct to home services okay so there are tv channels that are giving uh, education to the children by uh, at, in the comfort of their homes only okay apart from india digital educational program of tanzania has also won now let's know more about the award itself so first of all this award was instituted in 2005 uh, the winners get dollar 25000 in the prize money and every year the jury selects two awardees for this award so for this year basically for 2021 tanzania and india have won now the award was established with the support of kingdom of bahrain okay so guys uh he is the present king because you know the name of this award is king hamad bin isa al khalifa so he is the khalifa of bahrain at the moment and this is the location this is the island nation bahrain and the surrounding countries are qatar uae and we have saudi we have iran okay. moving ahead to the next question who is the captain of india uh, indian men hockey team so here manpreet singh is the right answer now guys uh, recently india has announced its full hockey team for the commonwealth games and the team will be led by manpreet singh and his deputy captain would be harmanpreet singh so that is the information that is the news apart from this last time indian hockey team men's team had won the fourth position in the commonwealth games it is something to be seen which position would india get in the coming commonwealth okay that was all about this news and this is the last news so hubert uh, gas has won the hal uh, open tennis tournament uh, by defeating the top ranked dash so basically this person has won this tournament and this tournament has been won by defeating the daniel medvedev okay he is the russian player daniel medvedev is a russian player and who hubart is from Poland. okay so this is the picture of hubart now guys recently the rankings of the tennis players have also been released so the men's ranking has been topped by daniel and women's ranking has been topped by the iga swiatek okay so she is from poland again and daniel is from russia
so that's all for today i hope that you have enjoyed the session and if there is anything that you want to discuss if there is anything that you did not understand you are welcome to mention your queries in the discussion forum you can mention your queries in the comment section below so all these platforms are there for you exploit them and connect with us thank you so much guys for watching the video